Hello, this is Shannon Kringen in Seattle. I go by Goddess Kring, that's my nickname that I invented. I'm trying to just kind of calm myself down right now. I'm very upset by current reality. I'm personally safe. Um, I'm very, I feel really sad for people that are not safe that don't have enough food or shelter, people who have had their homes destroyed by current situations. I don't want to say specific words, but we all know what's currently going on in the world with uh, physical safety, with nature, with humans tinkering with nature, with... Let me see if I can be honest about what I think and feel without saying anything controversial that would get me in trouble and have me prevented from staying published. Um, my focus is on my health. And when I say that, I mean my mental health as much as my physical health. I have a, a safe apartment that I live in and a really nice landlord and I have my health. Um, the fragilest part of me, honestly, is my mental health. But I'm a pretty strong person. I'm Norwegian. I'm a bit of a Viking, maybe. My ancestors, my ancestors at least, were Vikings. I'm using a filter on my lens right now because I kind of feel like hiding but I wanted to do a video. I mostly record my voice. I have a radio show called Goddess Kring Radio where I use my free speech and I express what I really think and feel. I hope in a non-threatening way. Um, humans need food and shelter and oxygen and love. Humans need love. We are not machines. We are not computers. Um, the social media platforms use us for data, um, for their purposes of making money and selling products and services and advertising and also ideas. Um, we are told what to think and what to feel. I'm not here to tell you what to think and what to feel. I guess the only thing that I would tell you is that every single human is unique. And I'm feeling very challenged psychologically because my opinions in, okay, okay. Now there's a loud saw out my window, which you can probably hear. It sounds really terrible to me. I hope you can't hear that. My opinions are not mainstream. Um, for example, I feed my cat a raw meat diet and he's healthy. He's mildly diabetic and I've managed to not have to give him insulin. It's very complicated. Insulin for my cat would not be a quick fix. It would, it's not like an easy one, two, three quick fix and he's good to go. So it's better for me to feed him a raw meat diet. And that's just one example. Um, I don't generally wear makeup and I don't use harsh chemicals in my house and I don't eat processed foods and I'm not on any medications. And I hope to stay that way. I hope to continue to not need any pharmaceutical medications. I like to live my life without pesticides, without harsh chemicals, without cleaning products that are toxic in my house. Um, when I go into stores and I see them with gallon, gallon containers of chemicals that they're spraying on everything, to make people feel safe. It does not make me feel safe. 
So I want to be safe from the current illness going around and for other from other illnesses, from all illnesses. I want to stay healthy and strong, my immune system, etc. And I also don't want to be exposed to harsh chemicals that could be carcinogenic or damage my lungs, ironically. Ironically, some of the harsh cleaning products that people use in their homes and that people are using in stores to wipe everything down, ironically, might actually be bad for our lungs if we're overexposed to it. So I believe in protecting myself from artificial chemicals and I like to spend time barefoot in nature in places where they don't use pesticides in the forest. I like to stand barefoot on the earth and soak in the good bacteria in the soil. Not that everything in nature is 100% good at all times. I realize there are things out there that aren't good. But generally speaking, there are millions of microbes on my skin. There's, there's V-I-R-U-S and bacteria and fungus and fungi and mushrooms and parasites and little tiny microscopic organisms. And there's, there's a symbiotic relationship. There's the microcosm and the macrocosm. There's the ecosystem in the forest, the plants and the animals. There's a, a, a wonderful movie called Fantastic Fungi which I so much am inspired by about the decay of nature and how paradoxically that brings forth life. So to sterilize everything with chemicals is not healthy and that's not what I want to do. I don't want to be enemies with nature. I want to be part of nature. In fact, human beings are part of nature. Another movie I love is called My Octopus Teacher. It's a new documentary that's online. I won't say where, just search for it and you'll find it. I don't like to promote companies. Um, so I will talk about the movie. My Octopus Teacher is about a man in South Africa who f I think it's called free diving. He dives in the ocean with no oxygen tank. He just has like a mask and a little snorkel thingy Mick Jagger and he dives and he becomes friends with an octopus, this beautiful female octopus, and he learns from her and he develops a bond with her. I don't think all humans could bond with an octopus, but he can. He's very sensitive and he tuned into her and he built trust with her over time. And he spent like over 300 days seeing her almost every day. And he witnessed her go through a lot and he witnessed most of her life cycle. Um, it was so beautifully done and the music is well done and the, the cinematography is beautiful. And so I thank you to the person who made that. I don't know his name, but I'm really inspired by that. And when I think about my life, I'm 51 years old and I'm an art model and a medical model and I'm an artist. I'm an intuitive improvisational artist and I'm a free thinker. And I'm not here to be disrespectful to anyone. I'm just here to share my own point of view. And again, I'm trying not to say anything that would get me in trouble and be controversial. I'm not a fan of the current political candidates in the United States. I'm not going to say anybody's name. I, I don't want to. Uh, I am told what I'm supposed to like. I tend to be a progressive liberal-ish person, although I believe in not wasting money. I believe in being fiscally responsible, but I believe in ethical pay and fairness, and I don't believe in corporate greed. I'm not a fan of corporate greed. I'm not a fan of poverty wages. I'm a fan of wages that would start lower entry level and get higher slowly and climb like a ladder. I'm a fan of social security. I'm a fan of nonprofit public health care. I'm a fan of 
uh, regenerative agriculture for both plants and animals, regenerating the soil, planting more trees, those kinds of things. I'm a fan of organic foods, and that includes plant and animal foods. I'm not a vegan or vegetarian. I used to be a vegan vegetarian. I am now an omnivore, leaning in the carnivore direction. I'm not here to prove to you the pros and cons of that. I'm just here to share. Um, it is now September 15th of 2020. And my name is Shannon Nicole Kringen. I live in Seattle, Washington, USA. I'm left-handed. I'm an only child of parents who divorced when I was four. Uh, I never had kids and I never got married. I opted out of that. I live by myself with my cat and lots of house plants. I have a lover slash boyfriend. Uh, we're not entirely compatible, but we're semi-compatible. We've been together five years. That's just some of my circumstance. I've been an art model for 28 years. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of GMO. I'm not a huge fan of large pharmaceutical corporations who mostly care about making a profit. Uh, I believe in what's actually healthy for me. And certain aspects of mainstream medicine do not seem healthy to me. The way I feed my cat is a holistic naturopathic way, and he is doing well. Uh, before I changed his diet, he had diarrhea. And now his poop is really healthy, not to be gross, but his poop is a darker brown and it's very healthy. It's not too thick. It's not too thin. It's not too stinky. It just smells kind of like poop, but it's not too gross. It used to be really putrid and disgusting, which they say means that an animal is having a hard time digesting what you're feeding it. If it's poop is constantly runny and really stinky in a putrid ass acidic kind of way, his poop is a is 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 kind of like clay and like well-formed logs of dark brown or medium not super dark but medium to darker brown and they're perfectly formed they're nicely formed he easily passes them out of his body sorry if that grosses you out but let's just say that his pee and his poop is not super stinky and he seems happy he's he he looks happy he exercises. I take him out in the yard every day. He cuddles with me. He purrs. His nose is wet. You know, my cat is doing well, and I'm not needing to take him to the vet. Um, I also don't need to go to the doctor very often myself. I eat mostly um, meat, real fat from the meat. I cook in pork lard, and I eat um, organ meats. I eat heart and kidney and liver. I eat all the different kinds of meats. I've even tried camel. Um, I'm a fan of regenerative agriculture. If I was perfect, I would only buy my meat from regenerative farms that do regenerative agriculture, that regenerate the soil and treat the plants and animals with respect before they are slaughtered. You know, slaughtering is never a nice thing to do to an animal, but I think that's part of life and it's nutritious for me. And quite honestly, I would rather eat like my ancestors ate than eat um, powdered uh, plant protein in a, in a can, in a canister, in a, you know, I used to eat that. I still have some raw hemp protein powder that I mix in with smoothies and I use like artesian well water that I get near Seattle with no fluoride and no chlorine. I drink natural water. I use coconut oil on my skin for my lotion. Um, I don't use, ironically, some of the number one sellers of lotion that are recommended by dermatologists, it says on the package, actually have petroleum products in them, which are not good for you. So that's a lie when they say it's good for you. When a dermatologist, maybe they're paid to say that. I don't know. Maybe uh, skincare product companies pay, pay dermatologists to, to endorse, but I don't use any of that. It's expensive and it has alcohol, which dries your skin and chemicals in it. So if you're allergic to coconut, then you can't use coconut oil on your skin for moisturizer. But then I would say you could use um, jojoba oil or olive oil 
or avocado oil or some kind of natural unrefined um, oil. So I use coconut oil for moisturizer. You could even use butter or pork lard on your skin, maybe. I'm not sure. And that's not a that's not a recommendation. I'm not a dermatologist. I'm just sharing my personal opinion with you. You should um, make your own decision. I, I was going to say check with your doctor, but the thing is, doctors don't always know. Like doctors go to med school and they don't have time to keep up with cutting edge science necessarily and read hundreds and hundreds of science papers as they come out. And a lot of scientific studies are sponsored by corporations that are hoping for a certain result. So I can't say that I fully trust that, but if somebody is certified in medicine, they are legally able to recommend things to you. But I would say be careful who you trust. I personally trust being more natural and I trust by being my own science experiment. Me personally, I put coconut oil on my skin and I don't have a bad reaction. I feel good. Uh, I eat, I've gotten thinner by eating real fat, real meat, real vegetables, real fruit. Uh, I eat nuts and not tons of seeds because they might have, um, lectins and stuff like that in them. But um, I'm careful about what I eat, but I'm not perfect though. I'm not perfect at all. Um, but I, I believe in being a natural human being. I don't shave off my body hair except my legs a little bit. My female private area, I don't shave. If you're happy shaving, shave, whether you're a man or a woman or transgender or any gender. Um, I don't shave my armpits. I tend to get a rash. I have very sensitive skin, so I don't shave off my body hair, except I do uh, groom my leg hair off, although I don't really have, like I'm 51 now, so I don't have tons of leg hair. I have streaked my hair. My hair, uh, I have naturally curly hair that I trimmed recently. So this is my naturally curly hair. Um, and I'm, I'm hiding behind this kind of hazy filter. This is like fabric. I put fabric, two colors of fabric on my lens and that's why it looks all hazy like that. Um, hope that's not annoying to you, but if it is, you are just going to have to live with it cause that's what I decided. So this is just a video to check in with you. Uh, I question authority. I even question my own authority. I question the status quo. My focus is on health, mental, physical, emotional, spiritual. Um, my cat is doing well. I am doing well. I, f I feel very psychologically challenged by the pollution in the air right now. I feel very sad for people that have suffered and gone through loss of plants and animals and human loved ones, the current um, situation up and down the west coast of the USA, especially right now, but all over the world there are different things happening that are, that are um, sadly, a lot of people are passing away right now and the earth is going through a lot of death, to be honest. Um, I want to focus on life and health and also acknowledge, like my parents are, uh, my parents are both in their 70s and they're both very healthy and they don't, neither one of them have like really bad chronic conditions and I'm really thankful my parents are healthy and they're in their 70s and they're divorced. So my mom lives on the west coast of the USA near me. My dad lives on the east coast of the USA, 3,000 miles away from me. So I haven't seen him in a while. They're both healthy. They're both editing their wills. I'm the only child, so when one or both of them pass away, I'm going to have to learn what I'm supposed to do as the only child of these parents. And I feel a little scared because I don't have any siblings, uh, but I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll just ask for help. I'll just ask whoever I'm supposed to ask, what am I supposed to do? I'm the only child. What is it that I'm supposed to do? I wasn't taught. Um, they're both acknowledging their mortality because the current situation we're going through is making everybody realize we are all fragile and we're not going to live forever. I mostly am glad I'm not going to live forever. Uh, I'm a little overwhelmed. I'm in the process now of renewing my passport 
in getting a um, enhanced um, Washington state ID or driver's license or whatever it's called. It's complicated and I need to have a form notarized for something else. And because things are closed or open in a strange kind of minimal way, I, I'm having to figure out how to do that and navigate that. Uh, I'm going to hike in nature soon with my boyfriend, lover, friend, uh, and have dinner with him. I'm so grateful that I have a safe place to live. I have food and shelter. I go to the food bank um, every week. I don't desperately need it. Somebody said they felt sorry for me. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that you need the food bank. But I'm like... I don't see it that way. Like I've been shopping at thrift stores to get bargains for like since I was a teenager and I've been going to the food bank for years. I mean, maybe I should be embarrassed because I don't desperately need the food bank. Some people do, but there's enough food in Seattle. I can't speak for other cities, but here in Seattle, we have really good food banks. I live next to two in my neighborhood that I'm allowed to go to once a week. And I say yes to whatever free food I can receive. And I give, I, I share some of it with a disabled uh, single mother and her child. And then my boyfriend, lover, man, um, I share some of the food with him. And I also share some of the food with homeless people. If I see somebody on the side of the road that is asking for help, I, I hand them uh, food if I have it in my car. Um, I love using the food you know, saying yes and receiving the gift of what the food bank gives me uh, because that enables me to spend less money on food so that I can have more money to put into my artwork and more money to make sure that I can get oil change. You know, I can spend it on other things like gas for my car. Like why spend more money on food than I need to? And somebody said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear you need the food bank. And I think they were just trying to be nice and say they cared about me. But I'm thinking it's resourceful of me to go to the thrift store and the food bank. I mean, honestly, why not? And like food is just being thrown away. Like somebody needs to eat the food that gets donated to the food bank. And believe me, they have a lot. I mean, if they hardly had any... Maybe I would just leave it for the people that are more desperate for the help. But since there seems to be an abundance of food, in fact, a lot of it seems to just rot and get wasted, I say, yes, thank you for the free food, and I thankfully receive it. So maybe do research and see if there's good food banks in your area and see if you can go and receive free food. It really helps uh, me spend less money on food and it cuts down on the food that just sits and rots and gets wasted. So um, maybe I'm a bit of a scavenger in that way, but I like doing that. And uh, it's kind of like a treasure hunt, going to the thrift store and getting a good deal on clothing and getting free food from the food bank every week. It's a surprise to me what I'm going to receive. And there's a lot of junk food that I say no to. That's true. If you like junk food, you might really like the food bank because they do seem to have a lot of junk food that they give away, uh, like sugary, carby snacks and all of that. So if you like that, you might be really happy. Um, but I mostly look for fruits and vegetables and, and meat, um, like an organic stuff. Um, but especially like red meat uh, is what I mostly look for. So I'm doing well um, with that. So. A lot of people are afraid to eat that, but not me. So I feel good. So um, I just wanted to share that. Oh, 23 minutes. Okay, that's long enough. Thanks for listening. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kringen, Seattle. I just wanted to check in. I feel better now. I'm Honestly, I'm a bit stressed out, but I tend to feel better when I record myself. So my website is shannonkringen.com. And if you just uh, search Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kringen, you can find my music, my poetry, my photography. I have over five or 6,000 photos on Flickr that are free to publish under Creative Commons. I'm a model and an artist. Thanks for listening. I always plan to do like a five or 10 or 20 minute video. It's 24 minutes. I gotta say that's it for now. Thanks for listening. I hope you got something out of this. Bye for now.